Okay, so how do we make our small sculpture? So I'm going to make an elephant just because I like elephants and because it's a good example. Uh, you know how to make a base, so roll your base using the guides you've got. And about this size should be fine, depending on what you're going to make, but don't go for a massive base. And that is um, the same thickness as the guides. Then you're going to use solid clay for the legs, and um, I've made some legs here for my elephant. Each one is just solid clay, and it's got a, a wide bit at the top, which we're going to use to join to the body. And on the bottom, we're going to join that to the base. Now, for your um, joint, if the clay is uh, a little bit dry, then you need to make up some slip, which is uh, clay mixed with a bit of water, okay? And we're going to score the bottom of the foot, two directions, three directions, doesn't matter. And then we're going to score where we want that to go on the base. And then we're going to put some of the slip, nice and gunky, plenty of it, on there. And we're going to stick the leg down, okay, like that. And um, I've made some more, I'm not going to stick those for now, but you'll get the idea. There's the second one, uh, here's the third one, and the fourth one. Okay, so here are my four legs, and I would suggest you make those first and then leave those for a few hours to firm up a bit. You want them not to be too bendy. These ones, are, I've left them for a while and they're fairly firm. Now we're going to make the body. And for the body, you're going to use a large chunk of your clay. You're going to have two kilos altogether, so this is probably about half the clay. And make it roughly the shape of the piece you want. If you're going to have a very long piece like the fish was, then uh, your, your lump of clay can be longer. If you're going to make a human and it's not too fat, then you don't need it to be quite this round. But this is the elephant's body. Then you take your knife and you cut the piece of clay in half on the long side, like that and you put half in the palm of your hand with the flat side up, and then you push your thumb into the middle of it like that, and you're going to pinch until the clay is about a centimetre thick, a little bit thinner than a centimetre, and that's why it's called a pinch pebble. So we're going to make a cup by pinching. Don't pinch too thin, otherwise it just won't have the strength when you're sculpting. There's half our piece. Try and keep the wall the same thickness all over. Then do the same with the other half, push it in and pinch. And in this case, the elephant is going to be a short fat elephant. There we go, two halves the same. Put them together face to face and then really well join them. Don't use water, just go round joining the two halves. You're trapping a bubble of air inside and that's what a pinch pebble is. It's a strong form, it's only a centimetre thick, uh, which means it dries well, but it's good and strong, and the air bubble stays inside it while you're working. Now, our elephant is going to have a ridge on the back of his body, which elephants tend to have, and it's going to look like that. There's a front and a back now. You can't really tell the difference between the front and the back. And that's going to sit between the legs, okay? We're going to join that onto the legs in a minute. And uh, we're going to have front legs and back legs. We might actually have that tilting up a little bit at the front. Now, when you're going to put the head on, you need to cut a hole in the end of your pinch pebble in order that there's only one uh, air pocket for the whole piece. So that's where the head is going to go. Here's a head I made earlier. It is basically a small pinch pebble, but it's not a complete pebble. Uh, let me just get rid of the trunk for now. So that's the, that's the head bit. We put that over the hole, make sure it's well joined, and then go all the way around and join it on. And um, you don't have to do the detail until after you've got it well joined on. So there is the head. The trunk will go on here later. I'm going to leave you to do all that because you don't need my help there. Now, when you're joining the legs to the body, I would suggest that you also score the tops of the legs. And, whoops, we'll do that. We'll, they'll be all stuck on. Uh, score those, put some slip on them, because it, it really does help when you're joining the pieces together, okay? So I'm not going to do that all at once, but you can see what's got to be done. And then when you put the piece together, let's just put that leg back there, these will all be stuck together, then you need to merge the pieces. Make sure you don't trap air between the leg and the body. If you've got a bubble of air between two pieces of clay in the kiln, that will explode, okay? Now, if, like mine, the leg is a bit drier than the body and you need to bulk it up a bit, don't be scared of adding clay, okay? 
and um, you just add and join and smooth it. I'm going to leave you to work out the surface texture you want, the design you want on the body, whatever. You can come up with your ideas. The one thing I would ask you to do before you finish, when it's all made and you're happy with it, is to take your knife and where the sun doesn't shine, poke it into the body so that there's a little air hole between the um, hollow and the outside because when you heat up a pot the air expands and if there's no air hole the piece will explode. We don't want that. I will check them after. Uh, I'm going to glaze these, you're not going to glaze them, so uh, when, we, when you bring it back you will choose the glaze, okay?